Thank you very much. Um, three years ago, or about three years ago in Germany, I think no one really believes uh, that the internet or the digital media are selling uh, fast-moving consumer goods. And that was the starting point of our project, which I would like to present you short uh, in a few minutes. Um, the idea was, or the question from our clients was, um, how does uh, internet um, really help to sell consumer goods in combination within the whole media mix? And to measure that, we looked at a source of data which we already had available, which is our consumer purchase panel, where 30,000 homes report regularly about of all of their purchases uh, within the consumer good retailing. As um, the digital media are very much fragment, fra uh, fragmented, we thought only um, um, a single source uh, solution might be the right thing to go for. And for that reason, we installed uh, internet measurement as well measurement for other media within the consumer panel so that we are able to really co um, uh, compute the return on, of investment of internet uh, digital media investments controlled against uh, TV print advertisement, but also controlled about what is going on and can have influence on the purchasing decision of uh, consumers, price, promotions, but also the loyalty. And as you can see just on that time frame, that is a, pro a, pro a project which is never going to end because all the media are always changing. Though at the latest stage, we are still at the moment uh, where we are also installing metering software on the smartphones of the consumers because we also want to see uh, what this uh, might, might change uh, their purchasing de behavior. So that's a composition of the whole model. Um, it's a consumer panel. We recruited 10,000 households representative out of the 30,000 representative for the online community in Germany, where online penetration is about 75% at private homes. 10,000 of them have been recruited, uh, representing 7,000 7, online users on individual level, where we measure traditionally the purchases uh, of their products uh, in fast-moving consumer good retailing but we're also measuring now the media contacts uh, to advertisement on an individual level, passive, electronically. And for that reason, we are using two technologies. One, it's a meter installed within the browser technology, measuring everything what is displayed on the screen, as you can see that on that example. And it's not only the adverts which are measured and registered uh, in our database, it's also what they are searched and what other research results have been. So well, this is one part of the data. The second part of the media data is um, uh, the TV measurement, where we are using sound matching technology, also with uh, individual, uh, uh, individual lock-on and lock-off of the people living in within the home. And we are looking at the 11 most important advertising channels within Germany. They stand for about 92% of uh, the total advertisement spend. But it's perhaps the relevant part of the market. So since we had that, we started in 2009 with first uh, reports and analysis for our clients. And you just see uh, some selection of them. Uh, we have been able to analyze 115 different cross-media campaigns within that uh, uh, research environment. Uh, what we have measured, first of all, is uh, the marketing eff efficiency, uh, which was analyzed uh, via a logistic regression modeling, a product which we have developed called Marketing Mix uh, Evaluator, on the base of every purchasing decision of that specific brand or within that specific category. Based on the data, because once you have that within the panel, we, you also can uh, develop other kind of analytics. For example, we uh, developed tools around really defining the right target group and to see where you can meet them, either in uh, the digital media, but also in uh, the analog uh, media. We are looking at the, the websites of our clients, how th they have been visited. So ha you have a big environment of data. Just some results. These are averages uh, from uh, the 115 studies which we have done. Not every one of that campaign has all elements of cross-media 
uh, in that. And if you look at the bottom of that slide, you see the so-called uplift factor, which means it's a probability that the brand is purchased, where the probability is higher than uh, that uh, then this is on average. And you see there's a wide variety of uplift factors going from 1.12 uh, for, 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 for Facebook up to 1.44 for video ads uh, within the internet. So if you compare that or if you multiply that by the costs of that advertisements, then you come to the return on investment. It's just the cross return on investment because we don't have specific information about all the discounts given on the specific media. Uh, and for that reason, sometimes or always uh, TV print looks a little bit more worse than it, it is in reality if we would look at, in the, into the books and the spendings of our uh, clients. But um, you see, um, yes, we are measuring just uh, the short-term effect, the, the real change within the brand choice. Um, the return on investment is always mostly below one, uh, one euro. If you spend one euro on YouTube, for example, the return on incremental revenue is 69 cents. This is pretty usual because we don't look at that kind of study, not about what, uh, what advertisement is paying into the brand value or brand um, equity. No? Uh, you can imagine that this is just the average, and there's a high deviation between the extremes, the things uh, which are more successful and less successful. And as we have done uh, 115 studies, we really divided the successful ones against the less successful one. And just I would like to share with you some of the key learnings, uh, what is better on digital and what doesn't work so good. So first of all, and it's pretty, pretty simple, and it's, I think, true for all media, the advertisement placement within a relevant content sells better uh, than if you are on a page which is uh, more or less um, have a high reach, but it's not really relevant content-wise for the consumer in the content of that product. Um, and the impression, or let's say the design, is always uh, decisive about the success. So what you are going to present, is this really an eye-catcher or not? Uh, we see a positive interaction between TV and Internet, and I will come to that later on with one example. Digital video ads um, helps to uh, compensate the diminishing TV reach. So we see in the community that heavy Internet users have less or spend less time and reducing their time on the TV. So if you want to reach this type of consumers, uh, video ads, digital video ads is one way to reach them then on the media where they are. And they, I think this is also pretty, sure, uh, pretty true for all kind of advertisement. Bigger brands, uh, brands achieve a, more, um, a higher attention and therefore a higher return on investment also within the inter uh, uh, digital environment. Um, so uh, online research or the success of a specific campaign does not really depend on the budget, different to what we see normally on TV or on print. Uh, it's more about the format, the message uh, which is uh, transported, and the placement uh, which really drives uh, the success of a campaign. Even a small campaign within the internet can be pretty much successful. Um, we also see that within the digital media, media, the specific target group you want to reach, the most valuable consumers of your brand, the uh, consumers with the highest brand affinity are much better reached than with mass media like TV or print. Uh, and what we also see, and this was, a, let's say, a little bit of a surprise, uh, that um, online uh, does not only attract a younger um, consumer, it also is relevant and it sells at elderly consumers. And if you look at the, the, the roles digital and analog media could have, digital sells better among loyal consumers, and uh, the analog media is better for recruiting new clients for a brand. Just some more detail on that three examples. If a consumer has contact with both, against a single contact with TV or only online, there's a 40% 40, 40 higher 
uh, sales effect. So there's a kind of spillover effect on average on the campaigns which we have analyzed. If you look to all of the consumers who had uh, contact on the internet on one of that uh, different formats, 27 or around about 27% of them have never been reached by any TV contact. So it really generates incremental reach. And if you look at the tar specific target group, though the affinity to a certain brand, um, the um, affinity of um, internet media is much higher and it's much more directed to the consumers for whom that, uh, this is relevant. So since we have this product, you're never at the end. Uh, social media coming up, and what we are measuring traditionally, it's what's going on in, uh, with uh, Facebook ads, for example. It's just another format or another, let's say, um, uh, uh, URL on which uh, this is taking place. But then we also have to look on the other media of, or other brand touch points offered by social media. For example, brand likes, comments, and uh, things like that. So we have been forced to read that out of the data as well. We also did first analysis for Facebook campaigns, and this is just an example, which we did for one of the big Ferrero brands. Uh, what we have found out in that specific campaign, uh, and we have been allowed by Ferrero to uh, share that uh, information with you, that 50% of the incre incremental sales coming from the advertisement was really caused just by Facebook contacts. And that specific campaign reached 3.8 million people just on Facebook, which have never been uh, in contact with that advertisement campaign via TV, which means a 90% incremental or exclusive reach. And therefore, uh, the Ferrero um, senior media manager, Angela Kim, was very proud about that and learned out of that um, uh, analyze it, uh, lies it that we are able to prove uh, that uh, the Facebook campaign has delivered an incremental reach and has positive cross-media effects between TV and Facebook. So how we are going forward, what are next uh, developments we would like to build in? Um, mobile, it uh, has been discussed pretty, pretty uh, intensively here at that conference. Um, we already launched the first subsample, 500 of our uh, homes of our, uh, subs of our sample of 10,000. We, uh, we have installed, again, a browser extension on their mobile phone that we can read what they are doing on the mobile phone when they are in the internet. We are also talking about and looking about solutions, uh, how we can measure advertisement contacts at work. It stands for, for about 35 to 40% of all advertisement content, uh, contacts within uh, the digital uh, environment. But this is just, let's say, in a stage of development uh, and testing. Just uh, about the importance of um, uh, mobile, uh, if you look at the total duration time within the internet, uh, about 12% of that is just with uh, mobile phones. Uh, and the reason for that is uh, that smartphones and internet usage via smartphone is pretty small uh, at that moment in Germany. But if you look at the specific users who have both screens available, the mobile phone on the, and the PC, on them, already 43% of the internet contacts is going directly via the mobile. Only 57 is left with a desktop. This shows what the challenge is for us to really move forward with a much broader measurement of all platforms which are available. So that's what we have, what we built beside of that. It's another um, panel, which is an access panel, which we also can use for experiments because our clients not only want to understand what has happened in the past, they also want to play experiments to see the, how does uh, different campaigns work. And for that reason, we also uh, offer a solution using the same technology. That tool is already available in Germany, in Netherlands, and we are partnering uh, with Intage in Japan. Uh, so it's available in three countries at the moment. We are uh, at the stage to test uh, or to, to create the business cases to roll that out in other GFK countries. And we are working together with uh, Kanta 
uh, our partner within Europanel also to uh, offer that service in their countries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. oh, hi, I was uh, just wondering if you could tell us how, how the panel came about. It looks like a substantial investment. Was this an uh, initiative by GFK or did you have partners who helped you build the uh, panel? Yes, um, that's a, it's, a, it's a huge investment uh, technology-wise, but also to recruit and um, to, uh, let's say, incentivize uh, the panelists. Uh, uh, the, um, um, in, uh, the, let's say an initial, initial um, uh, the, uh, let's say the initiative came really from the digital media to help us to that that up. Uh, but in the meantime, it's really something which is bought from a wide range of clients, especially from advertisers. And uh, for that reason, it really works um, as something which is uh, financed um, uh, from the whole industry. One more question. Thank you.